Hey guys, it's Will here and I'm back with another unboxing video. Tonight, got the new Orc Death Killer War Truck. So uh, as of filming this, this only came out yesterday. So uh, this is a brand new model. Picked it up from 40k Gaming who do really good discounts on their pre-orders. And uh, yeah, having um, had a look at the rules for this in the codex, this looks like it's going to be at best a, or at worst a solid choice at best an auto include in every list with the option on taking two this could be a really good model in the game but let's take a look at what the model actually looks like um, so I'm going to show you what's in the box and then I'm going to build it up and show what it looks like assembled so apologies if the camera is slightly shaky I'm having to do this one-handed because uh, my camera tripod's busted at the moment but uh, when you open it up you get your standard instruction manual here nice picture on the front and then nice detailed instructions with uh, all your component numbers marked and the bits you're working on highlighted um, you know really solid manual um, which you need because it is quite a complicated kit um, you know it's the standard what you'd expect from GW and then it's got the rules in there as well so if you were just paying plat power level and didn't have the codex you could use this but to be honest you're going to have the codex and I'm not going to focus too much on those in this video so uh, that's your manual then you get your base so these are the new bases um, for the uh, the new buggy models uh, all six of them use this same base and I have seen it compared to an Imperial Knight base before. This is a tad smaller than a Knight base, so it's a, it's not the Knight base. It is a new sculpt, which we can see from the fact that if you flip it over, the copyright date on there is 2018. So uh, yeah, new base, a little bit smaller than a Knight. But then we get to the good bit. We've got the sprue here. So this is all one peak, all one sprue. Um, it's done quite sort of large area to give a flat box. And uh, yeah, you've got a lot of pieces here. It's absolutely jam-packed. And the one thing with this is you're definitely going to need the manual because I haven't got a clue how this goes together. I can see that's engine. I can see that's wheel. I can see that's rider. That's probably the bottom of the chassis frame. But uh, this looks really complicated. But I think that's a good thing. It's going to make it a really nice kit. Um, possibly a little bit of a challenge to build. Not in the sense it's going to be fiddly. Just, uh, you know, you're really going to have to read the manual and make sure you're getting the right pieces in the right place in the right order. A couple of bits I want to focus in on. This uh, guy here is the, the war boss who rides it. Um, he's not strictly referred to as a war boss, but he obviously is. And the uh, the back there, he's got a nice uh, design on the back of his leather jacket, which matches the design on the um, like the uh, the outside of the axles there. There's this cool kind of flaming head thing. And I think for my evil sons, I could probably do do this red and then this sort of graduated flaming yellow. I mean, I don't want to do it too artsy because, you know, this is orcs, they're supposed to be brutal, but I think, uh, you know, having that looking like it is actually on fire is going to be pretty cool. Wheels here, nice big chunky wheels. Um, and these, I think, are probably the most logical orc wheels I've seen so far. A lot of orc wheels have these big metal plates on them, which just, I don't know, it just doesn't seem sensible to have metal nailed to your tyres. But, you know, they're orcs. If they believe it works, it works. But they're also not the racing slicks we've seen on the Shock Jump, shock jump Dragster. Which, while I get why they've done that, because it's supposed to look like a sort of a high performance sports car type thing, you know, like an F1 racer or a dragster, and um, they don't seem to make much sense on a battlefield. But these actually look like logical wheels, so uh, I like that. Got actual sprung suspension, and uh, you've got guns, it's got quite a few guns on here actually. It's got three of these, um. Uh, twin DACA death guns. They're basically like a, a short range, high power shotgun type weapon, but there's two strapped to the side of the bike and you've got one being carried by the crewman, so uh, the driver. So, uh, you know, reasonable amount of short range DACA there, particularly when uh, you've also got the engine which can be fired off as a flamethrower type weapon or a melter weapon. And I've got the fronts of the crew here, so you can see they've got these open jackets, which I think for like a biker or trike model is really cool. It's just that kind of badass biker look to it. So uh, liking that. And the claw here seems to be in several components. Um, don't know how much posability that's going to have on it. Um, is one of my sort of gripes with the latest GW models is they're not as posable as some of the older ones. Lovely sculpts, but they haven't got the posability. Um, 
which can you know, hamper you with conversions as well a bit. But uh, just the sheer number of components and the fact they're plastic means you should still be able to do some nice conversions. So I could seriously see myself doing two of these. Uh, first one, I'm definitely going to build up stock. Uh, second one, I could be seriously doing some conversion there. Um, and it's really got this nice mechanical look. Like every all these bits look like they have a function. So you can really kind of see how this is meant to work. You've got these exhaust pipes. This is, um, I don't know what that is, but it's obviously part of the uh, the worky bits. You've got the the uh, grappling hook that goes on top of his claw there because it's not a standard power claw. It's something a bit different. So uh, yeah, I'm going to get this built up now. Um, oh, just one final detail here. Just, just look at this bit. Where is it gone? Where's it gone? Here. Even seems like the actual cogs of the gearbox are all individual, so lovely detail on this. But uh, yeah, I'm going to get this built up and show you what it looks like once it's all put together. So the war trike's all built up now, and uh, on the whole I'm pretty happy with it. The actual assembly was relatively straightforward, although you do have to keep a close eye on the manual. There's nothing that's actually difficult or doesn't fit the way it should. It's uh, It all fits together very nicely. But um, a couple of observations I would have that you'd probably consider downsides. While the level of detail is brilliant, the level of customization on all of these new orc kits does seem a little bit low. On this one, the only actual customization with bits you can do is the head on the driver. So the um, the war boss, you can't customize his head. I mean, I suppose you could if you got another kit in, but uh, you've only got the two head options there. You haven't got a lot of the sort of flexibility you'd get with other kits. Um, and also the arms on these guys are completely non-posable. They're fixed in position. Now that's quite expected with like the hand that's holding the handlebar um, over here. But it was a bit surprising that there was no flexibility in any of the other shoulder joints. But, you know, it is a very nice kit and I think it is going to look good once it's painted up. Um, one other little gripe I had uh, on this grot, who is not glued in, so I'm going to paint him separately. He's got this big gaping hole in the back. Let's see if I can get that to focus. There we go. And I think that's because once he's stuck in place, he's supposed to, uh, you know, sort of lean up against the shoulder of the war boss. And uh, you're not going to be able to see that hole. But I just think it would be nice if he was a whole piece. Therefore, um, you could position him elsewhere rather than having one fixed position relative to the other model. Um, but, you know, it's a small thing. Now, the advice I would give you if you're planning to build one of these is sub-assemblies, sub-assemblies, sub-assemblies. So uh, with this, you've already seen the grot I'm taking off, I'm going to paint him separately. I've also left the war boss off as a completely separate sub-assembly. Um, let's just have a quick look at him actually, because he's pretty cool. So this claw is very nice, not much posability though, detail on the back. And this that I thought was the gearbox is actually the like the reel for the chain, um, because this can be fired off as a shooting weapon as well as being used as a melee claw. Drive is a separate component as well. Um, again, very nice looking model. Like the way he's sort of one hand firing a double barreled heavy shotgun. That's that's pretty cool. Um, with him, this uh, hand here, the one that's holding the handlebar, um, the handlebar um, goes on and then this bit's supposed to go over the top of it, which means you can't put this bit on until he's stuck in place, which is again a little fiddly, but nothing we can't get past. I've left the guns off as well just so I can get under here into these bits and to make painting the front wheel easier I've left these bits off as well and the rear wheels so uh, this is quite uh, a lot of bits here but because of uh, the way it goes together I want to be able to get in and paint all the detail under here which I'm not going to be able to do if I leave a lot of the bits on so uh, yeah I'm going to be using sub assemblies quite a lot for this but that, that's not uncommon with large GW models these days and I think it's going to give a better finish overall so I don't mind doing that it's just uh, for the purposes of this video I have to try and balance them all on there which is a bit fiddly but uh, yeah on the whole not a bad kit enjoyed putting it together and I think I'm going to enjoy painting it now I'm not going to do the painting part in this video because I want to get this painted quickly and when I paint in tutorial it takes two to three times as long to actually finish the model so uh, 
might not do that on this one but further down the line I may do a painting tutorial on one of the other buggies or another one of this because like I said it was enjoyable to put together and I see no good reason why um, you know I couldn't use two of these in a force they are really solid um, anyway thanks a lot for watching let me know what you think in the comments and uh, if you want to see me paint this up or at least see what it looks like when it's painted go over to um, Instagram and just search Warhammer Will on there subscribe and once this is uh, painted up you'll see some pics of it on there anyway thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you guys again soon bye